Hey everyone, it's 10.39 on a Sunday evening and it's the 11th of August. Um, yeah, so, I've got a few things I want to show you that I picked up over the last few days. I've got a cat on the floor who <laughs> just suddenly appeared out of nowhere. And, uh, yeah, so, where to start? With the radio, I think. Now, I've got this one, I'll show you it in a minute, from a guy that does a lot of house clearance, garden clearance, office clearance, and all that sort of stuff. And I've known him for quite a few years now, actually. And, um, had several bits and bobs off of him over the years. He's the guy that, sort of, like, every once in a while, maybe once a year, just depends, I get a bunch of computer stuff from. It just depends whether the computer shop he knows requires stuff cleared. Anyway, this radio actually came from his aunt's and uncle's house, who uh, recently passed away, so it's probably the hardest clearance he's ever had to do. Um, he's actually now taking two weeks off. Because there's another item I saw in the garage that I want, but he, he's, um, he tends to clear everything and then sort through it. Uh, but like I said, he's now taking two weeks off and whatnot, so I'll message him again in two weeks. I'm in no rush to get it. It's a barricade light, or a road warning lamp. It's an old paraffin one. Um, but I would buy it off of him, and I would give him a fair price for it. Um, in fact, I've got a price in mind. If you can actually just show me a couple of um, closer photos. But I would give him, at the very least, 30 quid for it. So he'll get the going price for it. Because he's actually let me have, you know, items dirt cheap over the years as well. So he's done me quite a few favours. So, you know, things like that I don't like being cheeky on. I weren't really cheeky on this, I don't think, either. But anyway, I've got this to try to get working. It's currently not working. Um, it does turn on, it does get power. It is a tube radio as well. Although, according to the schematic on the back panel for the tubes, that one's incorrect. It should be an EM80, that's an EM81. I don't know if that one digit difference is going to make a lot of difference, but... Uh, I'm going to have to do a fair bit of research on this. There is some wax capacitors that are going to have to be replaced regardless. Um, but it turns on, once the tubes have heated up, it does make quite a loud humming noise. Um, but all the tubes do start glowing, which is good. I don't know if the tubes are actually any good. Because there could be a weak tube in there somewhere, I don't know. I don't have a tube tester. But when I turn it on, it's just volume and on off switch there. I do that and I can get a crackle from the speaker, but no sound when I do this. There's no sound, there's no white noise, no nothing. Um, but it is a th three ba band radio with gram. So I don't know if gram is short for gramophone. I'd probably put that on there for, um, <laughs> as a record player or turntable, that's probably meant, you know, trying to be a bit more fancy. I say that because this has got VHF and FM, which is way after the gramophone was invented. Anyway, it has had some work on it, as in it's had a new power cord fitted at some point in its life, with, if I can actually get it up here, a baby blue plug on it. It's not actually a compliant one, not with modern standards. It's good enough, it's undamaged and whatnot, but it doesn't have the um, partially insulated live and neutral pins, as you can see, they're just fully bare. No big deal, really. I mean, if I was going to sell it, then I would put a plug on like this with the uh, insulated pins on, or the half insulated pins, but 
just for personal use like that, I'm not going to worry about it. You know, it was only designed to be insulated like that, so if the plug had slipped out the wall a little bit, any little fingers can't get behind there and um, get a shock or anything. Or if you pull it out a little bit on the screw, if you know, and get your finger up there, which I can't actually do. But to do it, to get enough room, I'd have to actually unplug the plug completely. And the uh, shutter in there would shut. So, I don't know, to me, the um, insulated pins just seem a bit pointless. But better safe than sorry, as they say. I suppose kids' fingers might get in there, because I've got short, fat little fingers. <laughs> Probably why that was done actually more than anything for kids' safety as they like to uh, poke around with things. Oh, so yeah, I'm actually looking forward to getting this one up and done. The TV is going to be the bigger challenge, but I actually wanted this to go with the TV. But now Mum wants to steal this off me like she did the TV. I think as I lack room here, I might let them keep this down at theirs. I think Mum just feels a bit nostalgic, you know, when she sees this. Because it's probably something like her Mum and Dad used to have when she was little. But the speaker is in very good... Everything in there is in very good condition. Obviously the cabinet's a bit beat up here and there. There's a mark right there and there's some scratches on the top there. But if I really wanted to, I could have that sanded down and refinished. But I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. Because I do like a bit of a... What do they call it these days? Patina on things, if it ain't too bad. You know, because I just think it... Adds to it. It makes it look aged quite nicely. I mean, if it was really, really rough, like the TV... Then I would have it all refinished and whatnot, but... It isn't too bad, in my opinion. That is actually wood. I think the TV is... Bakelite, I think. Oh, sorry. I've got a bit of a thirst on. Right, to the bedroom. There's actually a lot in here that I want to talk about, because... Um, I want to try and optimise the space in this bedroom which I'll get to in a minute and explain a bit more on first a friend of mine who collects lamps offered this one to me now I've got several um, of these mini lights but this one is actually an earlier one which is actually quite hard to get hold of you don't see them on eBay very often these are the later models as you can see there's one difference there as well as the handle shape, I don't know if you can see that, but the handle shape is a bit more square, there's a bit more sort of right angles or, well not right angles, but you know what I mean. It's not got the big curve on it like this one has, um, as well as the little knob, knobule things, knob things on the top of the lens there. That one doesn't have it. I actually think that lens is slightly darker than that one. The base, or the bucket as they're commonly called, is actually a different shade of yellow as well. I've got another one there which has got the earlier handle on. It's got a late, later model lens on it, but it's got the earlier handle on. Although I do have one of these light yellow coloured buckets with the early lens on as well. Um, yeah, I don't know which one's actually earlier. I think this one's the earliest. I'm going to have to ask. I haven't actually taken a photo of this to put on the um, collector's groups yet, so I'm going to have to do that. Now I'll ask. I might put it side by side with one like that, or my other one, which has got the correct lens on it. Uh, yeah, so that's why I bought that. And this has actually got Mini Light Navigator. Um, and I've actually got a Maxi Light with that same red lettering and... Um, same colour plastic body actually. So I'm guessing that Max Light of mine is an early one as well. Which is actually the reason I bought it. It's not in here, it's in the outside closet. But while we're on that subject, um, I've got the shelving cut for the outside closet. And it's actually here, it's down in the shed. 
because uh, I'm going to have to use a handsaw because I forgot to measure how long I wanted them. Um, well, it wasn't a case of measuring. I thought it would just be easier to whip the handsaw through them here to cut them to length because I don't actually know how many of those shells I'm going to need cut to that specific length until I start getting them installed because I need to know the heights, you know. Uh, and I think it was actually going to go the height of those maxi lights. I think that's what I was going to do. Use those as a guide. But anyway, all I need is a bucket load of uh, brackets now. And screws. I think I will actually buy some bag packets of screws simply because it's a pain in the ass trying to find screws in my little box. Um, and I don't think I'd actually find enough of the right length and size anyway. Um, because really all I've got left in my box of assorted screws is just little ones. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do that during the week. I've got an eye appointment Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon. I think what I'll do, because mum and my stepdad's got an eye appointment as well. She booked them in all us all in in the afternoon. I'll meet them down there so that gives me time to uh... <coughs> oh, pardon me. That's because I took that swig of coke earlier. That's Coca-Cola YouTube, not what you might think it is. I know what YouTube is like. You said a certain word. Not that they can demonetize me because I don't get money anyway. <laughs> Anywho... Uh, I'll have to borrow my stepdad's drill as well. I'll borrow his SDS drill because it's bloody good at drilling into tough walls. Because for some reason the back wall in that closet is actually pretty good to drill into. It's like any other wall. The side walls, I tried that. They're bleeding tough to drill into. Um, so yeah, that's going to please the neighbours when I do that. <laughs> Actually, speaking of stepdad, he's just bought a tractor. Um, don't know the year. All I know is it's a Ferguson TE20. Um, and it looks like a complete wreck at the minute. It needs all four tyres. There's one wheel that doesn't have a tyre on it, and the other three are completely wanked. It's, uh, actually, one of the back tyres is just falling to pieces. A chunk of it had actually fallen off on the trailer because the guy actually um, delivered it for, I think, 100 quid, 150 quid. He delivered it because he had to come up from Cambridge. Um, yeah, we, <laughs> we were trying to think of a way to get it off the trailer and in the garden. Um, so I actually suggested why not bring the van round? And, uh, you know, hook the van up to it and then just pull it off the trailer with the van and down the ramps. So that's what we did. <laughs> that worked a treat. But because at the other end of the dirt track at the back of Mum's is just a big open bit of grass where the, um, there's a row of very dilapidated garages that are owned by Victory Housing. Um, so he drove his truck and trailer back down there. My stepdad bought the van round, we just hooked it up with a ratchet strap, pulled it off and towed it up to the driveway. Not the driveway, the um, back gates. And pushed it in. My god, was a bitch to push on four flat tyres. Actually, I think it would have been easier if it weren't for the fact that one of the back tyres was just completely shredded. Because as soon as it hit that bit, it didn't want to roll. Because a big chunk of tyre had actually fallen off. There was like half a tyre on that rim. And every time it hit that bit where the tyre was missing, it just didn't want to roll. But, uh, yeah, we start to take the engine apart. It needs a lot of bits. It needs bonnet, um, carburetor, exhaust manifold, but I think that's actually um, combined with the inlet manifold as well. Because one of the um, mounting holes has actually snapped, so we can't put an exhaust on it, so we need the manifold. Uh, what else? Radiator's there. We just need two hoses. 
one of them looked like that's already been replaced because the guy we got it from was actually going to, you know, rebuild it and restore it. Um, it's going to need two back wheels, all four tyres, seat, one of the rear linkage arms because it actually snapped on us today. <laughs> we thought we'd see if there was um, hydraulic oil still in the three point linkage lift arms. Um, so my stepdad lifted it up fine, yeah. So I moved the lever to the other position to open the valve, you know, the other way. And he was pushing down on him, and all of a sudden, not the actual big beam or the hydraulic arm, the bit that links the two, um, just snapped. I don't know what that bit is called, but that just cleanly snapped in half. There was like that much metal holding it on because the rest of it had rod, and obviously we didn't see it. But um, I'm actually glad it did it when we were checking it, rather than if we went to lift like a, a trailer or an attachment or something, then it decides to snap. So I'm actually gl glad we found that. But when we took the engine to bits, we've got as far as the head off, um, we actually found one of the valves was stuck. So we probably wouldn't have got it to start anyway, but the distributor's missing, the points are missing. But apparently you can actually get quite cheap an electronic ignition upgrade for it and 12 volt conversion kit. Because um, I've actually been a member of Hedro Tractors and Lorries on Facebook. Well, it used to be called Hedro Tractors, but they recently changed it. Um, for a few years now, so I took a little photo of it and put it up on there, and uh, someone actually suggested or recommended um, to upgrade the ignition system. I actually like that idea. Because not only that, being an, an electronic ignition system, if anything breaks, it's going to be easier to fix and easier to get the parts for. Um, but the guy said the only reason he did it to his is because with a distributor, it's going to be worn, or partially worn, you're not going to get it to run as well as you could. Which I thought, well, that's actually a fair point. You could get the engine to run, and run well enough, but it just, it depends whether you want to stick with originality, or upgrade. I'm not sure what my stepdad wants to do, but I will pass the information on to him. He's not as Facebook savvy as I am, so I tend to look on things like that. But all he does with Facebook is uh, look on Marketplace, which is where he found the tract. And believe it or not, he only paid £200 for it. Um, which I actually thought was a good price, even if it is a bit... Um, crispy here and there. The bonnet is completely missing. The seat is completely missing, that's why we need to replace those. The dash bezel, or whatever you call it, around the steering wheel that has the oil and temperature gauge and whatnot in, is rod out in one corner. I'm not sure if we can fix that, you know, like make a patch and put in there, or if it would be just cheaper to buy a replacement. The rear fenders are both knackered, but they are being an absolute bitch to get off. I couldn't get those nut bolts to budge. But then again, on one of them, I was clearing out rust, and the um, head of the bolt actually just flew straight off. <laughs> it just rotted. So I think we're, the only option we've got there is to take the wheels off when we get to that point, and um, grind off the bolt heads remove the um, fenders and we'll just have to re-drill the holes and re-tap them, that's all. So we can bolt the new fenders on. But apparently you can actually quite easily get a lot of the parts for this. A couple of people on my photo have said uh, they can get me some parts and whatnot, so that's actually great. That's one of the reasons I put the photo up on that group. So we could uh, have a dig for parts, but as funding is limited, in that it's not actually a regular income, because he's only on disability, um, it's probably going to be quite a long process in restoring it, but my stepdad does not like sitting around doing nothing. That's why he got it. What a nice project. And I'm actually looking forward to having a go driving it. 
so yeah, looking forward to that. Anyway, going back to things what I um, picked up recently, I've got this lamp. Look at that. Apparently it was used on the railways. I can't confirm that and I you know I don't know if it's um a wrong claim or an accurate claim. But according to my stepdad, who's into his railways big time, he said it is actually an ex-railway lamp. Made by Everready. And the guy I got it from said it's 1950s. And actually, going by the design, I would actually quite believe that. It does look sort of 50-ish, especially with that headlamp design. Um, and it does work. So, considering its age, it's in pretty damn good condition. Um... It does work. The dome works as well. That's not a flasher bulb in there. There's um, the motoring torches that always had the flasher bulb in. And if you don't know how those flasher bulbs worked, it was on a bimetallic strip. There's a bimetallic strip in the actual light bulb. And um, what those bimetallic strips do, they heat up. And when the, it would heat up, it would break the circuit because it would bend. Of course, when the circuit's broken, it would cool down and then bend back and create the circuit, turning the bulb on. Really simple um, and very effective, actually. But that is why you could have like three different lamps with flasher bulbs and they'll all flash at a different rate. You know, I've got three of these uh, blue motor mate torches. One's actually called an X Eyed and it's not a motor mate, but it's the same bloody thing. Where is it? There's one, there's two. Where's that disappeared to? Oh, it's up there. That's the X side one. See what I mean? It's exactly the bloody same. Same colours, same button layout. It's just got a different sticker on it. That's it. That was called the Auto Beam. That's what X side sold it as. So I'm guessing at some point X side must have bought the um, the rights to produce it. Maybe it was produced like that in another country under that name. I don't know. I don't know the history, but all I know is I've seen a lot of the um, Ever Ready bicycle lights from the same period, the 60s and 70s, that actually have the Exide name on them as well. So I would actually like to know the story behind that. I'm just curious. So yeah, that lamp, this one, actually cost me, believe it or not, £20. But I think that was worth it. I like lights. I like the style of this. It's all metal construction. Obviously, except where they need the insulators. <laughs> it's in good condition for its age. Although, to be honest, the um, reflector could do with refinishing. Or polishing. That does work. <laughs> I think that's a lovely lamp, that thing. Actually, going by the red top and bottom. Not the dome, the actual metal bit. Yeah, I'm actually convinced that it's a railway lamp as well. It's even got that handle on the back with what looks like a design to hook it onto something, which is what you would do on the railways, you know. You could use that and, I don't know, on the front of the train you might need a white light and you pop it on. Especially the steam trains that didn't generate their own electricity. So, because they were actually used for many, many years. Even when diesel locos were around Steam locos were still being used. Yeah. Ooh, pardon me. Yeah, that's probably one of my favourite lanterns of that style now. And it's certainly one of the largest. But I have to say, if you can get a good motormate torch that doesn't have a worn lens or a dirty torch lens like that one, I think it's this one, it is actually very, very bright. And that dome is actually quite clear as well. Uh, but for brightness, this Crompton one is actually better. All the writing's disappeared off that plate. I think it's a Crompton Vidor. Vidor, or however you pronounce that. I've got a car boot for a fiver. I had to put a new flasher bulb in the dome. Now, this is actually quite bloody bright, this thing. Including that torch bit. So that is actually my favourite, just because of that. Or well, one of my favourites. That one's got a nice bright dome on it as well. 
You know, I love these. I've actually been looking on eBay because I want to buy some more Pifco ones. That's a Pifco brand. Pretty certain that's a Pifco brand. Can't get the bloody dome to unscrew at the minute though. This bit won't unscrew. Pifco? I'm sure that's a Pifco. Now that I think about it, it might not be a Pifco. <laughs> and for some reason, that's got a rattle. Yeah, I want to get that off. Ooh, uh, all of these have got batteries in, they all work. Anyway, the last thing I want to chat about was this corner. Um, that whole bit in there just looks untidy. Those lamps will eventually go. <laughs> um, but I need to do something though with my cases of cassettes there, my cassettes that are up there, and the CDs and whatnot. So what I want to do, and I've got a couple of things in mind, I was considering rearranging this bedroom and moving this so it's in a position in the room where I could extend this side, because obviously I can't because of these doors. Um, but I've got a couple of options. I could put it there, but then I don't have headroom above it because I've got these shelves. I don't really want to take those down. I could, because I could move them over here, but ideally I don't want to do that. I like that setup. I don't like that gap. I don't know why that gap is there, but I've just noticed it and it's now pissing me off. <laughs> but yeah, I do like that setup. Um, mainly because it would require filling in holes and painting them over and I can't really be bleeding asked for that at this precise moment. Or I leave it as it is. Um, because it's a lot less work. But either way, one thing I want to do is add some shelves in here. I want to add one in there. So my plan is to put two more legs here, halfway between this one and the one up there. And then put a shelf in that gap and a shelf in that gap. Um, put this one up high enough so it just fits this Viglan Windows 3.1 machine in there. That would actually, um, the only reason I want to do that is because it will um, free up some space on here. I am now thinking that maybe I should have a complete rearrange. Because it's actually hard to use the keyboard and mouse there. So what I might do is actually put the stereo in this corner. That can stay where it is. That's absolutely fine. I'm not going to move that. Um, and then put the PC up here. And perhaps that one up here as well. And then I could actually just put the shelf for that computer there. Right under it. And perhaps another one. For the Windows 2000 Dell that sits there, straight under it. The only thing I would have an issue with are those, because they're quite tall. Unless I lay them on their sides and stack them up. That's another option, I could do that. They'd still work laying on their sides. and look a bit weird, but they would still work. Uh, yeah, so that's another option. Um, then I could perhaps make some shelving up in that corner or something and uh, put my audio cassettes on them or I could actually put the stereo in the corner and put some shelves for the audio cassettes in there or make up Something like this. I could get my stepdad over winter or something to make up a smaller version of this that I've got the CDs in to put the tapes in. That's another idea, actually. I like that idea. Because that sort of wood is quite easy to get a hold of. All you need is an old wardrobe or something. Old wardrobe, old chest of drawers. In fact, to make it, I could keep the two end panels from this. That would give us enough wood there to make it. Don't know about the top panel because it's got a bit of a bow in it, I think. Um, although if it hasn't, I would keep the 
Mind you, I could get that bow out of it because I could actually take it off, turn it up the other way and put a heavy weight on it like that. And I'll take the bow out of it. Yeah. I like that idea. I actually like this idea more than um, moving the whole bedroom around because I actually quite like this layout. I haven't changed this layout in years. You know, I know mum when I was younger she used to change rooms around every once in a while but I don't. Well I have because you know I've changed the lounge over the years. But uh, yeah this bedroom's had this layout for I don't know how long now. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with my plan. In fact, one of those tall PCs could actually slide down there, to be honest. So I'd then only have to lay the two shortest ones in there. Or the two that would actually look the best. Or I could just put them into a small case. <laughs> Yeah, I might have to fire these up because I haven't been fired up for yonks. But I, actually, I actually quite like that idea, to be honest. Oh dear. Right. I think that is it. I'm actually getting tired, so I want to go to bed. Um, yeah, I don't think I've forgotten anything. <laughs> Switch that light off. Okay, so thanks a lot for watching. Uh, hopefully, I can actually film me fixing something. Oh, that reminds me, I had Cat's Custom Trikes pop up the other day. I had to fix her e bike battery. It decided to uh, cook the wiring. Well, I did manage to uh, fix that fine. I should have filmed it, but it's a bit awkward and I wasn't really in the mood anyway like I said thanks a lot for watching I will uh, talk to you in the next video bye